Listen up. <laughs> Here we go. Exactly, because oh, wow. I remember he was writing for. He was, I mean, not to blow him up. I mean, he's not there anymore. But MTV was mad because he would do all this freelance hip hop shit. So then he came up with a with his pseudonym, the K- Kawan. Yeah, he, he with Buster now. Just... Yeah, yeah, he's happy yep. with Buster. Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, good. I was glad to hear that. Pigs is diesel too for the kids that don't know at home, man. <laughs> hey, I brought y'all a couple things. Oh, oh man, man. The 4th of November. Yeah. I love it. 4th of November. This interview started off on a great foot. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this Yankee hat, man. Look at these look at these hats, baby. There, there we go. go. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, you too. So Biggs, I remember everybody gets one. <laughs> <laughs> No, Biggs, I remember hearing the horror stories about how, like, you know, in the beginning, like, it, well, more so you hear out of necessity, like, you guys, obviously, you, Dame, and Jay were, like, ahead ahead with things like fashion, right? And yeah. you went to meet companies like Iceberg, and they yeah. weren't treating the culture with the proper respect. So did a lot of these clothing aspirations just really come from that adversity? Like, how did they start for uh, you to yeah. get you know, Harlem, Harlem guy always wanted to be fresh, you know what I'm saying, always staying fresh. But uh, it was funny because, actually, I started wearing Iceberg, I think, in 94. Wow. So, you know what I mean, Jay and Dame and a couple other guys got on it probably in about 95, and we went to the first uh, Tyson fight when he just came home. He just came mm. home from jail to fight McNeely, and that's actually where the song Can I Live came from, you know, when he said at the Tyson fight. You oh, know, wow. Same wow. night, same fight. And, uh, and that's where Emery actually got his name Vegas during that. Vegas Jones. Yes, wow. Vegas Jones during that same trip. Uh, so the song, with Biggie, when, the song with Biggie says that line, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, right. Biggie's not the, laughing at the Yeah, death. yeah, but I'm saying he talked about Can I Live, um, the, yeah. uh, you know, at the tables. Uh, I forgot the line. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Right. The second verse. When oh, crap tables. Yeah, tables. Yeah, crap tables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vegas Jones. But uh, that's where, you know, the, the line started getting a lot of notoriety at that time, and then Jay would put it in the songs after that. And then what was it when you met? You just felt this was, was it real? You felt real disrespect from the iceberg type people that didn't understand? Yeah, because we went there to try to get some product to put in a video and they would turned us down. So they was like, nah, we're not giving you anything. And then that kind of led, you know, for us to try to do Rockaway on our own. And then I remember hearing about you used to have sewing machines and like you kind of didn't even know what you yeah. guys were doing at sewing first, machines, right? Yeah, sewing machines, you know, giving out t-shirts, one arm longer than the other. <laughs> I mean, it was crazy in the office back then, man. It was crazy. So how yeah. did you get it to? How did you start to feel like you guys got to figure out how to do it? Like how to really well, make clothes? Uh, well, that's when they uh, partnered with the Russians with um, Alex and Norton. Yeah. And they had Wu Wear and a couple other lines going on. So um, Danny Schlesinger was the head of sales there at the time. And um, a girl named Shani, I think, was doing merchandising. So when they got with a company that had a little more know how, and then we was able to give them the direction of what we wanted the clothes to look like, mm. it, it made a lot more sense. Because you time. had the vision, right? Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. So we knew what the kids were wearing because we, you know, we, we were, you know, at that time the consumer. Right. And you then know. it took off so fast, though. Right. Like, was, were you shocked by that? Like that it was, uh, it was such a huge success out the gate. Definitely was shocked by that. You know, we knew, but way before this, probably when Dame first talked to me about doing Rockefeller Records, you know, we talked about clothes, uh, liquor, uh, you know, the music, and actually the only thing we probably didn't do was the amusement park. We talked about that too. <laughs> <laughs> Dame, Dame had a lot of ideas. Rock amusement park. Yeah, Dame had a lot of ideas at that time. So everything that we were doing, it was actually something that we talked about. Maybe so that was already four the or five years. For lack of a better yeah. term, the blueprint right. from Jump. Yeah, uh, prior to that. So that that line that Jay says, like eighty mil, that was a real. Thing. Yeah, that was a real. Yeah, eighteen months. Yeah. Wow. Line just really took off. You know, it wasn't a lot of yeah. urban brands at that time. So you had probably uh, Carl Kanai and. Uh, um, Fubu, who was you know, but that that they were fading out at the time. So Fat Farm was probably the only other thing that was kind of taking off. So yeah. like Sean John too, right? Sean was right after that. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. But you must have felt empowered because I remember going from a point where it's like, okay, me Dame at the office, no, me Dame at the at the clothing spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like to really be making your money like outside of be to be so relying mm-hmm. on. The record companies, and I know at times, you know, things got a little tense with Def Jam at the time. So, mm-hmm. what was it like to get feel so empowered now that you was gaining all this income through another avenue? Well, we actually felt empowered going into the game, you know. So we always, you know, being that we were street guys and you know coming up how we did, we never, you know, at that time really had any respect for anybody. We always <laughs> thought we were better than everybody coming right. into the game. So. It wasn't, you know, we always felt empowered from the beginning, whether we had something or nothing, relatively speaking, or what other guys were doing in, in you know, in the music or the clothing business. Mm-hmm. So we just always had that confidence. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and at that time, 
when the clothing took off, you know, Dame kind of went over there and started to pay more attention than that. And that's what the time probably I started to uh, be more hands on in the music business. Mm -hmm. So how did the 4th of November come about? Um, it was a, a childhood friend of mine, uh, Radu. We spoke and um, I went to talk to him one day actually about some music. Mm -hmm. uh, he had texted me and said he wanted to talk to me and I asked him what is he doing in the clothing uh, business. And he began to tell me about this, um, you know, something he was working on and how it was this uh, poor family out of Ecuador that met, that was uh, that's, uh, a mother and father and how they started, um, same thing with sewing machines and they had kids and they always had aspirations for their kids to kind of be in the clothing business and they grew up and the parents actually met on a street called 4th of November. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. in Ecuador, so it was actually his address. So he was telling me that it was like a love story that created <laughs> art and design That's crazy. that came to wow. be Fourth of November. So he was telling me about all this product that they had, and he wanted to partner with me. So we actually spoke about that the week before Fourth of November, wow. and started to, and started <laughs> this is last year. You said, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, last mm -hmm. year, and then yeah. started the company uh, on the Fourth of November. Wow. Yeah, because we were saying you popped up. We didn't see you till January, like images yeah. of you with your event, but you had yeah. got out of your situation from. from yeah, I actually been out of jail in May. May. Yeah. yeah. And you decided you should keep a low profile out the gate. Uh, yeah. So you know, I had six months anyway. You got to be on halfway house home confinement. So I had to do that and get you know, and you know, once I started the the music, I mean uh, the clothing, uh, we had the idea to kind of do these events. And that's when I kind of popped up, and guys thought I just came home, but I had been home probably seven months prior. Mm. Yeah. So why the pelican with the logo and everything? The, like that? Uh, the pelican is kind. Of, that's what um, Ecuador is kind of known for, like oh. the, near the Galapagos Islands. So, you know, there's a lot of different species out there, but the pelican is what everybody's known for. So you go out there, and that's like the main thing you'll see it on a T-shirt. So they kind of wanted to pay homage to that too, back to the you know right. Ecuador where they're from. My mom is half Ecuador. I don't even know any of this. I got to step <laughs> my game up. <laughs> yeah. Ecuador Greek and black. I got to step my so game up. So is the line available now or? Yeah, we actually uh, they had a um, a situation. So we actually partnered with Foot Action, and we got in their top thirty stores. So we actually in the windows right now in their top thirty oh, stores wow. around the country already. Okay. Yeah, and then we are going into Macy's in June, and we opening up distribution now. It was funny because. People just really took to the line, so it's selling out online. So people go into our website, and it's like out of stock, out of stock, because we can't keep the product fast enough. Now we got to do reorders, but you know that takes sixty to ninety days. But I didn't know that was going to be, you know. And then people may not even know you're affiliated with it. At first, yeah, a lot. Right? Of, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So they just kind of, you know, they like the quality of the product, which was good. So now through these events, because I had an idea to kind of do like, um, it's like Art Basel and uh, fashion uh, fused together. So we, we have these events where we have artists come paint um, on the, on the uh, jeans or the jacket. Right. So they use that as a medium. And then they also show their pieces. And then we also do a build out of what the clothing line actually looks like. Mm. So it's like this taste mixer event that we go state to state um, around the country. So we did New York already where they did the denim jeans. And then we did, uh, we just came from Atlanta where they did the denim jackets. Yeah, and so we're going right. to LA next where they'll be doing the denim shirts. Wow. And then we'll be back here in June, where I'm planning to do Fourth of November presents uh, Reasonable Doubt's 20th year anniversary. Wow! I mean, but it's not an athletic line because you said Foot Action, right? Yeah, no. Uh, so Foot Locker is more known for the athletic line. Foot Foot Action is now trying to move to boutiques. So mm -hmm. actually, the price point where we in, they didn't have that customer. Oh, wow. So they wanted to partner with us to try to bring in a new customer into their, um, you know, into their retail shops. Cool. cool. And the Atlanta event, you said that was just recently. Yeah, Atlanta week. was. Uh, I saw even last that, like, week. special ed popped up. I yeah, like, that's what I said. <laughs> and that's why I was like, I grabbed him. I was I like, got come it on. Made. I, yeah, I was like, come on, we got to take a picture. You know? <laughs> Did you know, you know him from No, nah, that was the first time I met him. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. So wow. I got to meet him. I met Sleepy Brown. You know, a lot of guys that I, you know, respected in the game. So it was cool. He was there too. So you can see, speaking of respect, we've seen a lot of images of you and Emery. Like, talk about that. Yeah, man. I mean, and, Emery is my guy. So, you know, like I said, uh, back in. You know, in Vegas in 95, uh, you know, we became really cool. You know, he would come up here a lot to see Jay, and we would go shopping a lot down in Soho. So, you know, we go down there, and Emery want to spend five, $6,000 every week on clothes. <laughs> so it's just funny that now he's like the, the fashion specialist right now, right. Um, you know, with, with, with Rock Nation. And also, you know, he's controlling that brand. And also he works with New Era, and he works with Puma, Adidas. Like, Emery's like all over the place. He actually has his own... Puma sneaker that's coming out. Uh, wow. Yeah. wow. Okay. Yeah. So Emory Vegas Jones bet on yourself. So that's coming out. I think on Black Friday. 
So, I mean, he's doing everything right now, man. I was really, you know, I was really he happy for him. must be inspired to see him come out of his situation. Well, definitely. So, we, you know, we aligned ourselves. You know, we were always best friends, you know, and we lived close together. So, we spent a lot of time together. You know, I listened to him about what's going on, you know, with, with the clothing lines and Urban and his direction and stuff. And he listens to me and we throw, you know, we bounce stuff off each other all the time. But... Um, I mean, he has a lot going on right now, so you know, and I'm real happy. To, I seen the sneaker and the sweatsuit that's coming out. It looks real oh, hot wow. too. A little tough. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Emmy's yeah. a great designer. So, what are your goals for for, for November? Like, I notice it's obviously like keeping a low profile. There's no celebrity endorsement. It's no. No, I didn't. I didn't want to go that route uh, like we did in the past because a lot of times when people fall out of love with the celebrity or the face of the brand, it it affects the brand. So I. I believed in equality, you know, something that we didn't have in the beginning. Uh, you know, back then it was always about the face and somebody endorsing it. So I wanted everybody to kind of build a relationship with the brand through these cool events. Mm. So, you know, it's early events, you know, five to 10 o'clock, six to 11, something like that. Guys go to the after party, whatever. But it's really about uh, just fusing art and fashion and then um, having people come in and get a taste of feel of what the clothes is. Mm. And, and what wonder you done well is maintain great relationships, right? Even though you yeah. don't do a lot of media, you have yeah. a lot of great colleagues. And I mean, yeah. we've known each other for a long time. Like, mm -hmm. Talk about the importance of that and like how like how much also impact the people you've worked with are now in the business and going on to great things. Well, it, it probably was easy because, uh, you know, by Dame's yelling at everybody, everybody wants to talk to somebody in the room. <laughs> So, so I was, I'm always, I'm always the guy. The, guys, the quiet guy. In the yeah, they're like, well, I'm going to talk to Biggs, man. Biggs is, you know, Jay's on the side. He's like, you know, like, you know, listen to the music. Dame's yelling, and I'm the guy that everybody could talk to. So I maintained a lot of relationships. So that yeah, yeah, that definitely worked out. Do you? Is there any like? Um Resistance kind of getting into this field because I remember you said it a long time ago, like trying to break into the lick with Armadale. Yeah, you didn't know necessarily the ins and outs. Mm. This time around, is it a little bit easier to? It, it is easier because you know this is something that I've done before. All the other businesses, were, you know, we we kind of jumped in for the first time. Mm. So having um, some experience helped a lot, especially with the team that I had. So you know, my partners rather, you know, I mean, Danny who was the head of sales and he broke other brands, you know, like he was there from the beginning of Rockaware from it was, you know, from zero to 350 million. He, uh, you know, he helped build Coogee, he helped, um, you know, he was a part of Truck Fit. He was a part of LRG and like so on and so on. And so was uh, my other partner, Radu, who's a, also a childhood friend. I mean, he knew Dame before he knew, before I knew him. He grew up with Dame, known him since he was six years old. So, you know, he's been in the business and um, did brands with the Migos and uh, Lil Bootsy, and, you know, so, yeah. I mean, it's a great team. And plus the head of production, uh, you know, she worked at Calvin Klein, um, John Varvatos, uh, the designer actually interned for me at Rockefeller. Then he worked at Rockaway. Now he's a partner in this specific, wow. this specific brand See? as well. Yeah. It's full circle. Cultivating yeah. talent. <laughs> yeah. You said growing up, like, I think, even, obviously, we know you're from Harlem, and you and Dame, you know, knew each other for a while. Like, how did you guys first connect? Like, how did you guys first become uh, friends? Through the, it was a crew called The Best Out okay. that my brother was a part of, and then I, I, I became, you know, a part of that. So I was actually the youngest one in the crew. So all my friends are probably, you know, two, three, four years older than me. Mm. And my brother, I was probably 14 at the time, and I met Dame on 142nd Street. Um, on my man block where, where, you know, Dame spent a lot of time with a, a real close friend of mine named Terrell. Yeah. But that all came through my brother. Mm. And was Dame, a young Dame like the way Dame is now? Was he always high energy? And yeah, <laughs> exactly. He was. He wasn't arguing in the, in the offices. He was arguing on the blocks. <laughs> you have a lot of brothers, though, right? Yeah, I have. Yeah, I have eight brothers. Uh, one of them, uh, the one specifically I was just talking about, he got killed. So that was a uh, uh, Bob that uh, oh yeah Bob Alab, yeah Bob Alab that Jay talked about in Lucifer yeah but um yeah I got a couple brothers in a in the music business too uh, hip hop which you know some people is the other shadow right like they they think I'm the shadow <laughs> they, like he <laughs> he right. never shows his face too much neither but uh, yeah hip hop he was the A and R A and R uh, probably uh, thir twelve or thirteen of Jay albums did uh, Beanie Siegel. And a lot of other projects for us. He did Little Kim at Atlantic, but he actually found Kanye. He found Just Blaze, uh, yeah. uh, No ID, and you know, mm. and and built one of the biggest management companies, you know, uh, with Hip Hop Seventy Eight. When he Rokes partnered with G, right. yeah. another former employee. Yeah, exactly. Code. Yeah. Right. Did you know Hop had that in him? Like, did he wanted to be in the business like that, or he just no? I developed? did. Yeah. No, and it's funny because I just seen uh, he wrote something the other day it was. Uh, 
I'm, I'm not sure if it was he was talking about the 20th year anniversary. Oh, yeah, for dead presidents. And he said, yeah, I remember when my brother Biggs picked me up. I picked him up from a basketball game, and he was like, and I was telling him, I'm like, yeah, I'm messing with this um, guy named Jay-Z. I might do something to music. And he couldn't <laughs> believe it because he went, when I dropped him off, he went to his house and brought back probably like 10 tapes, wow. you know, cassette tapes. And was like, here, listen to this. And he had all Jay-Z recordings. Wow. But you say you weren't impressed by Jay at first, right? No, nah, I wasn't. Um, in the beginning when Dame was managing Jay, Jay rap fast. And, um, the, the you know the things that he talked about I couldn't really relate to it was more you know technical and skillful uh, you know rapper at that time, but it was at the battle with DMX that me and my brother Bob really was like wow this dude is dope when he talked about money dancing on the ceiling and all that and that rat tat 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 do you know what I'm saying <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah so when he's he, like I can relate to yeah, that yeah <laughs> that 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 battle was legendary. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, no footage, Biggs, man. Someone Damn has footage. Yeah, Big Big L had the footage. You were friends with Big L too, right? Yeah, yeah, because Big L's from the block. You know, Big uh, L had the footage? Yeah, Big L was the one taping it. Yeah. Wow. wow. So that Yeah, so that little Big bit L. of footage that we had in backstage, it was like a little bit of it. Yeah, that came from Big L. Big L was there taping it. Instead of battling Big L's out there taping it himself. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. That just blew my mind right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where do you go? So from so there? what so but the, before that though, like uh, so then you start to believe. So what what is that transition like? Because Dame talked a lot about it. Like you know, you cats are from Harlem. Brooklyn cats move a different way. Like yeah. Did you feel like you had to get to know Jay first before you was fully committed? Like what was that uh, process of like? Yeah. Well, yeah. Dame introduced us and he kind of gave us a little you know a little background. And once we did it, it, it clicked automatically. It wasn't yeah. like a borough thing at all. So me and Jay really you know we clicked. We, we hit it off. You know, and then we, all three of us we would hang out and spend a lot of time with each other. So at that time, it was just supporting them on whatever they were doing in the music. Mm -hmm. So this one, you know, before there was a single deal or anything, and we were just going around shooting videos, and they did I Can't Get With That. And then in my lifetime, you know, we flew down to St. Thomas. You know, mm -hmm. still at that time, it wasn't any deal. So there's, it, w it wasn't a single deal until we got back. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I got, you know, my family's house in St. Thomas. Emery bought the whole island out of Champagne. He wow. bought every Cristal and Don Peel in the island. So if you see a few <laughs> bottles of Moet in the video, it's because that's all they had left. Wow. Yeah, so, you know, we were just talking about that the other day. And, you know, we just had a great time. It was all about the support. Even when we did um, the Feeling It, uh, um, wow, yeah. I mean, the In My Lifetime remix, same thing. You that know, was the just, first yeah, thing, yeah, everybody just coming by, you know, with two, three cases of Cristal. And we just come and support the video. Wow. I heard a story about the In My Lifetime video. Yeah. About the uh, speed boats or something like that, that somebody had to connect. <laughs> yeah. Is that true or false? So like, oh uh, yeah. Well, I'm from St. Thomas. Oh, okay, okay. So you know, a lot of that stuff came through me. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. that was the uh, the past big shit. Yeah. <laughs> so when did when did it shift to we we're gonna make reasonable doubt? Like in that that process of just you guys all together putting an album together. That, yeah. You know, so like actually, I I was in St. Thomas. I was living there for for a period of time, and I had came back. They had a hurricane down there, so I had to come back. You know, so. Uh, me and my girl came back, and then Dame and uh, Jay approached me and, you know, asked me if I wanted to be a part of, you know, the, the company. You know, it mm -hmm. wasn't just about support no more if I wanted to come in and be a be real a, partner. Yeah, be a real partner. So we had put that together. Yeah. And then the process of you knew Jay was ready to make an album? Like the reason yeah, the he idea had of reasonable maybe, doubt? Like how did that develop? Probably at that time, I believe he had coming to age done. And maybe that was probably the only song. That was probably the oldest song on the album. So, wow. like, Can't Knock the Hustle, I picked the beat for that. Um, when, uh, what's his name? No, uh, Nobody. Nobody, yeah, yeah, Nobody produced that. I remember picking that in front of 1199 and, um, at Dames because Jay didn't like it at first. And then we had <laughs> wow. that presidents that Mace was rapping on at first, and I didn't like the way his voice sounded on it. And then we end up. Uh, <laughs> Bidas, yo, Bidas face is that crazy. Was right dead, I don't remember that. <laughs> yeah, no, nobody heard. Nobody it. heard yeah. it. He's wow. saying that so dead president existed with Mace rhyming over it. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was, he was with the non sample and everything. Yeah, wow, wow. Because you guys had did some work with Mace. At that time, yeah, we was doing yeah with the um, him Cam and uh, damn, well I can't think of the name right now. Um, Bloodshed. Wow. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so th those yeah, were some they, of the yeah, early songs. Yeah, that was a group. Yeah. yeah. But was it, did they have the you have the concept of reasonable doubt and the whole concept of it? No, How did that develop? No, we didn't okay. have. Um, I, that came a little on. I think that was Jay's idea to do reasonable doubt, and then we end up uh, getting with Jonathan Mannion, who actually you know did the cover, and then we did the you know the suits and everything. You know, the suit store way. I used right. to go to down on Sixty Second Street. <laughs> so he went there and you know bought some three thousand dollars suits to you know kind of uh, do the cover of that. But yeah, that was all Jay. 
that um, the, the idea for that. And even I hear stories all the time, but just for clarity, Rockefeller Records, like was there other names for the label before? Or? Nah, and actually Tone Hooker came up with that name. So Tone was a part of um, Original yeah. Flavor. Right. So he gave him the name. Oh. He, and he gave the name actually before, you know, I had something to do with it. So that was him. And it was, you know, like Rockefeller, you know, like when you battle. And then plus Rockefeller, you know, obviously being right here, right. the Rockefeller, what they, you know, the notoriety for being right. rich and that lifestyle. So it was kind of, you know, played on both of that. Yeah. But this year, making 20 years of that particular album, like looking back on it, like what are your thoughts when you? I mean, it's crazy. I still can't believe it. You know, my son is about to be 20 years old and it, like all these memories are coming back. Like I remember having him and walking him in the office. But uh, 20 years, it just, I mean, so much has happened since then. Right. You know? I mean, Jay's, um, you know, taking things to another level, things that we started. Uh, everybody's kind of moving on their own now, but everybody's doing great. But not only that, all the guys that we kind of raised in the music, you know, so everybody that worked for us is either a vice president or a president at a different uh, <laughs> record label right. or music company. It's just crazy yeah. to me. I'm just happy for everybody, you know. Even the street team, you know, I'm looking at now, they have real estate companies and things like right. that. So every time, you know, I run into somebody and hear about what's going on, I'm just like, you know, it's really good, that, you know, the place that everybody's in right now. That's so dope. Like, yeah. even in the video for Dead Presidents, you got, you were at the table playing Monopoly with the guys. Like, yeah, yeah. Like. Yeah, that was crazy. I think we probably brought out about 200 and something thousand dollars and we had, you know, real money. <laughs> so I remember, I remember Biggie Eyes opening like, what's, yeah, these guys ain't put out an album yet. Where they getting this? <laughs> you know. So, and if you notice, all our videos back then is all closed bottles of Cristal, you right. know, so, and then we make sure that they open by the end of the video because <laughs> a lot of people, they got to, you know, take those bottles back. Right. <laughs> so how important was it to show that you guys were different and authentic and that you guys were really living this lifestyle? Like, It, it was real important because that's what we were selling. Like, people were really buying into what we were really living. It wasn't something that we were just talking about. So, you know, even, you know, we, we went through Atlanta right before we dropped the album and i mean we made so much noise and then by the time we came out people was like oh man i really remember like they they was really doing what they say they was doing yeah. so at that time you know we really had to show that was but it, you but you couldn't buy your way it was into authenticity the, that's right. what I'm saying. authenticity also down to how you then approached it because it's not like you can really buy yourself into the game right like yeah you guys really took to the road and did the chitlin circuit and did the Everything. small shows yeah like, i remember talk about jay, that yeah. grind of that I mean, like, yeah i remember almost jay humbling yourself to a certain yeah, level right yeah to, jay yeah. opening up for ill and out scratch and i remember <laughs> Yeah, around yeah, my way. Yeah, <laughs> I remember doing uh, colleges when it was probably about ten to fifteen people there, but Jay still killing it. <laughs> Those yeah. ten or fifteen people were standing <laughs> up. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, he. Put, I mean, he put in a lot of work, and people don't understand that because a lot of people come into the game now and they don't know how to perform. They don't know how to do. You know, they don't know what bars is. They don't. It's just about a song, a catchy hook. But Jay put in so much work. Mm -hmm. And it took so many years to get to that point to just reasonable doubt that people just think that it, it happened overnight. Mm. It wasn't overnight success. Right. Mm. They say it takes like ten years to be an overnight exactly. success. Exactly. Yep. Right? So well, when? Go ahead. No. One more thing with reasonable doubt. Like when did you? When did you feel like towards the end of making that album? When did you feel like okay, this album is like special and like I think this is like I mean every the game. Every song was was crazy. Being in D D at that time and then uh, premiere. I remember we, we was talking we was actually going to perform at uh in Howard and we spoke to Premier and we was going on the highway and he was like, Man, I like what y'all did with Patrick Moxie and how y'all got off the label. I'm doing <laughs> uh three songs for nine thousand. <laughs> so we was like, "What?" You know, what I'm oh, because he knew from doing business with Patrick that that wasn't yeah, exactly. that wasn't easy to yeah to, exactly. to maneuver. So you know, Premier getting on board. Um, I mean, just the sound like you know we used to have so much fun back in D and D at that time. You know, what I'm saying the you know the, the the grittiness, the grime. You know, being in there. But I think the turning point was that day when Biggie came in, and when you know now you you seeing two greats together doing Brooklyn Finest. Yeah. We was like, man, this this is gonna be crazy. Mm. And it's funny because Biggie came in there and Biggie didn't know what bars was. You know, remember how that, that you know, that was like on f on a fifth bar or something like that, that song, it was kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. So it took Biggie probably three sessions before he f he actually finished. So Jay went in there and finished at that same day. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and Biggie's like, man, when you rhyme with my song, man, I'm gonna make sure it's a regular beat. You ain't gonna have all this all nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> right. But were you guys happy? I mean, cause you hear the story like volume one, it wasn't critically acclaimed as yeah. much. 
But were you happy with the way Reasonable Doubt came out? That's the reason why. Yeah, the definitely. Of- yeah. And, you know, everybody said like the first album, you take your whole life doing it. Right. So, you know, everything mm-hmm. else is only a year or six months or whatever it is. You're putting it out from mm-hmm. there. So it was everybody's input. I mean, down to the skits. Right. I mean, you know, everything. Like, we was trying to make, a, you know, a classic. We was like, man, we're going to put our all into it. And, yeah. I mean, Jay was just, it, it just seemed so easy that he would, the, you know, the fire that he was spitting at that time. I mean, like, you know, day after day, he'll, like, he'll call and then spit the evils on the phone. Then I'll see him. Then he'll be like, yo, I got this beat and this can I live. And he's spitting that in the car. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we'd be like, yo, Jay, I'll call him again with my man Kurt or Claudie B. Like, yo, do that song, The Evils, again. And then we put him on speakerphone and JV spitting it. You know what I'm saying? So those are, like, really, really good times, man. What was it like when Def Jam reached out, before we can get to Volume yeah. 1, like that, that that transition of, like, okay, now you even caught the attention of the major record labels. Yeah. Like, yeah, they're was, treating you like a big boy yeah. now. So, so they want to it was actually meeting. Sony and Def Jam that was reaching out. We were mm. really close to doing a um, deal with, um, with Sony, with Ron Sweeney. Mm. But, um, wow, Ron Sweeney. Yeah, he so he had uh, he had did something that was a little underhanded, and then... Um, <laughs> We had, uh, you know, we talked about it. Then we had gave our word to Lior that we would do the deal with them. So we just went back, and that seemed to be a better situation for us. Wow. So was it always that contentious thing of, of you guys? Like we see Damon Lior and the jackets and things like that. Was it always a contentious nah, situation? No, it wasn't. Def Jam or? No, no. What was your take on the partnership with Def Jam in terms and, of? And, and in the beginning, it, w- it, it was love because, you know, especially we had so much success, right? So with that, we were just really trying to protect the brand at that time. So mm-hmm. when we came out, we had, uh, well, you know what started it probably was when we dropped In My, uh, In My Lifetime, Volume 1, and when it wasn't doing good, and then Dame had the idea to do Streets is Watching, mm. you know, to get the streets back on board because of yep. the Sunshine video, yep. and Leo and everybody didn't believe in us. So at that point, it was like, man, y'all cold, and this and that. So Jay, Dame was like, look, I, we got a plan. And we did that on our own, and then it kind of, you know, it pushed us to platinum. Yep. So then now they back on board. So at that time, it was kind of like, oh, yeah, now we see, you know, mm-hmm. what these guys is about. And especially the formula that we had, the formula, you know, the buy and sell formula that we had didn't kick in to the third album. I mean, the, the next album, yeah. which Hard was Knock Life. Hard Knock Life, and we knocked it out the park. What so do you mean the formula? Thing the formula, because we had, a, uh, you know, we once we signed a deal, we knew we were going to sell a company. But the formula didn't kick in till that album, which was good. So when it when it kicked in, you know, it was the amount of record sold times uh, net and profit. You know, it was you know whole formula that was put in place, and we ended up selling six million records. <laughs> so <laughs> they didn't think that. So it just it helped them at the same time because they was getting ready to sell. So it raised their value, and then it just pushed our value through the roof. Wow. That so was, and you both sold at the same time. I no, guess, Def Jam ended up selling the year after that. And then we sold in 2000, well, we sold in 2002, and then we did an extension to 2005. So a lot of people think in 2002, everything was sold. They only gave us a portion of the money. Mm. So we ended up mm. making, um, just from the sale, uh, it was uh, close to $30 million. And that's not counting, you know, the royalties and everything else. Wow. But the intention was always not to, to make a profit and to sell it. No, no, no. We made profit. We made a profit all along the way. Wow. Yeah. No, but you dealt, You was always thinking of the formula and having in the cell. Yeah. Not a long term thing. You wasn't trying to have this. Label. No, 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 no. Because we oh. know, and at that time, you know, hip hop. I mean, uh, the life of a hip, you know, a rap artist was only two or three albums. Yeah. So we were just trying to build a company to sell it. You wow. know, that's when we cash out. Yeah. Was it always a concern of your end that that because Jay remember and people forget back then Jay would always talk about I'm only gonna make one more album. I'm only gonna do X Y Z. Yeah. Right. Like so he just, people. He like, just told me that the other day. <laughs> <laughs> And that's exactly what I did. I laugh. I said, come on, man. You're too close to the Beatles now. <laughs> but no, adding all those acts, like bringing the diplomats on board, like what was your take on that? Was that also moves to try to make sure that um, it isn't just so no, relying on that Jay? Was just a, actually, no, it wasn't. That was just a relationship that we had with Cam. And he actually came to um, Dame with that, and then Dame called me in the studio to hear the album, and it was ridiculous. I mean, I think it was only probably only Old oh Boy and maybe uh, New York City, mm-hmm. those two – two songs were probably the only ones that weren't on the album the rest of that whole album was done so cam just came with a with a complete project so i, I you know we i gotta give him all the credit right. for that we wow. didn't do anything but people talk about that era when you know cam was made vp and mm-hmm. all that type of stuff but did their presence because they're strong personalities that mm-hmm. cause some tension and sort of change the dynamic in a way that uh yeah yeah i would guess to? so you know what i'm saying there was a lot of things going on at that time and 
you know, at that time we were at a place where everybody kind of wanted to do different things. So it was just a lot of uh, probably tension, period, in, in, in between Def Jam and Rockefeller. So, you know, we were winding down, and at the time we were trying to think about how to make the artists coming up bosses mm -hmm. so they could have their own record companies and music labels and their own staff because at that time we knew we were transitioning out. Mm. During the Streets is Watching, there, that was, in, was that an independent release? Uh, no, that was with Def Jam. Oh, that was with Def Jam, okay. Because mm -hmm. it felt like you guys had to do that out of necessity. I mean, and, and yeah. in hindsight, it, it's, it, do you think you get the credit you deserve? Because, like, I don't remember any video acting kind of theatrical releases together before well, Streets is Watching. Um, well, you know, people who, who, who really knows about hip-hop and can look at Streets is Watching, they, they know what it meant to the game because a lot of people try to um, replicate that. Right. To some, I mean, Kanye, even up to recently, right. what he did, you know, with the making of um, his, what was it, an album or two ago, when he did is is, 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 is along the same lines, yeah, right? Yeah. He just did it a, le a lot Visuals, more artistic. Right. Um, you know, we, we just did it with Abdul, you know, so just walking <laughs> around with a camera and just putting something together, you know, nobody knows how to act or anything like that. But uh, yeah, it, I, I think people kind of recognize it though. Right. But around the time when Jay was doing the Black Album, I guess you also just felt as a company that you were nearing towards the end, right? From what you from yeah. what I'm gathering, yeah. right? So that was yeah. Kind so of that's what I'm saying. It so reflected from the whole company on exactly. So we knew at that time, you know, 2005, that was going to be it anyway. So everybody was kind of going off and you know do their own thing. So you know, 2000 uh, probably yeah, 2000. That's probably when I stepped in to to do uh, all the business on a music level. So I personally did. Uh, the state properties, and I did uh, um, Young Guns album, you know, the Can't Stop, Won't Stop, and then I I, I um, broke Kanye's first album, so I did that personally as well. So, you know, at the time, Dame thought it was, he didn't really understand the music for Kanye's album, and thought we could just put people on, and Jay was kind of off doing the S. Doc Carter thing. So, you know, I kind of hired independent uh, radio uh, guys and got on um, the single and picked the second single and so on. From, and, Judah, from the Judah Wire on? Yeah, like from Through the Wire on, yeah. Was this pre, this kind of philosophy pre when you had a Dream Team album? Like, because... Uh, I think the Dream Team album was after that. Yeah. Oh, it was after that, okay. Yeah. What did you see in Kanye? Did you did you think? Because he didn't fit well, the I, bill of, I, like, I, I the spent, Rockefeller yeah, artist to a certain extent. At that time, right? I was spending a lot of time in the studio. So, like I said, Dame was at Rockaway and um, doing, you know, some other things with um, with, with the fashion. And, you know, I I mean, I heard an, a classic, <laughs> you know. Wow. So, and me and college Kanye. College dropout. Stuff, yeah, too. college dropout. And me and Kanye would have long, long, long conversations. And, you know, he had the idea for the next two or three albums after that. Oh, yeah, so late I, registration yeah. and all the good-ass so jobs. I, yeah, <laughs> so I seen the genius of what he was trying to create. So I would actually go back and talk to Dame, and Dame would just w was being, a, you know, at the yeah. forefront, and would go and argue with Leo because Leo didn't believe in it at the time. They wanted to drop Kanye and the Young Guns. Right. While we had Can't Stop, Won't Stop, and Through the Wire, they was like take them someplace else. And then we went to, um, can't believe it. Was, uh, Capital. Rem yeah, no. yeah, it was Capital. Wow. Yeah. And they was kind of, you know, we thought they was idiots at the time, so we went. <laughs> We was like, we might as well just keep it over here at Def Jam, and that's how we end up staying. Well, what was your role musically? Like, people don't know that. Like, how much right. involved, like, you're picking beats, you're giving people pointers yeah, on, like, executive production more so, I guess, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but everything at that time, I was, you know, everything, I was controlling the label at the time. Yeah. So, every day going to Def Jam downstairs, you know, meeting with my staff once a day. So, publicity, radio, you know, um, legal, samples, A&R, like, everything wow. from A to Z. Were you on Bring It On? Was that you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I always wanted to know if you say rack them up, Biggs. I ain't know yeah, if that was you or not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why would Leo want to drop Kanye or they they didn't um believe in the project at the time. It was early on. So I think at at that time through the wire it was only getting about a uh, sixty spins. Mm -hmm. It was this one place in D C and then Virginia caught on fire. So wow. um they didn't they didn't see the potential in the um project. Wow. But then your incarceration, you know, Dane was really adamant you know, mm -hmm. for your you know, fighting for you. He was saying like he was upset with Kanye because he said he didn't stick up for you or... Yeah, you know, I, so I, I really don't understand what that was about. I've heard, you know, some things and people send stuff in, but uh, I seen Kanye the other day. Oh. So I went to the, um, you know, the um, the listening party he had in the garden. So that's my first time seeing him, first time seeing oh, Jay. Wow. Oh, wow. Like Jay and I, we were sp speaking, you know, prior to that, but that's the first time we've seen each other in a long time. And 
a lot of people, you know, always ask me through the years, Yo, what's going to happen when you see Jay? What's going to happen? I was like, I don't know. We probably laugh, and that's exactly what happened. <laughs> we just laughed for like five yeah. minutes before we said anything. Right. But and then somebody tapped me from behind, and I turned around as Kanye, and he was like, Yo, thank you so much for coming out. You know. Wow. But because people, you know, the Rockefeller thing, I think is the biggest movement that people believed in. And like you said, for the mm -hmm. integrity you got stood on, it's still hard for people to accept that 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 ended. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, do you, what were your feelings at the time? And what are your feelings now about this situation? Um, at the time, I, you know, it was a sale of a company, so everybody was, you know, just moving off in different directions. And uh, uh, at that time, we were still young. You know, so uh, there was, like I said, there was a lot of things going on internally at the company. We wasn't speaking a lot day to day and spending as much time as we did, you know, when we were younger to kind of iron things out. So, you know, there were some discrepancies and then people, you know, went their they own ways. But eventually, you know, we all spoke about it. But at that time, like I said, we were all in a different place. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even coming home, like you said, maintaining those relationships, you know, as I see everybody is just like, look man we made history together like <laughs> yeah. you know like no, nobody could take that away from us so you know what i mean everybody's just happy for each other right now and just trying to support because i remember hearing the time jay was saying well if, if you give me reasonable doubt then you know i'll let you guys have the company or run the company and stuff like that like, yeah that's a conversation you had with dame that yeah that was you know over the name but um uh yeah that's what happened but we decided not to yeah yeah <laughs> you know but that's you know but now that that still is the the thing is still binds the three of you guys together though reasonable doubt. Yeah, that's exactly. why people are like, are we gonna get a 20th anniversary show? Are we gonna get those yeah. kind of things? Like, yeah, I'm not like I said, I'm not sure about the show. I'm not sure what Dame or Jay is doing. I know what I'm gonna do. Yeah. For for reasonable doubt, and you know, I spoke to Jonathan Mannion about it, and I'm thinking about uh, you know having because he did reasonable doubt and the next albums after showing mm -hmm. all the uh, pictures and all the artwork as the art, mm -hmm. f you know, along with you know Fourth of November uh, clothing. But um, I'm not sure if Jay's going to do something or Dame's going to do something. It would be more powerful if we all did something in different states at yeah. the same time anyway, right? Because it's a big project. Right. But and you didn't feel like Kanye had no obligation to hold you down? Definitely there? not. Oh, okay. No, I don't feel no artist has an obligation to hold me down to do anything because, I mean, we, we entered into a business agreement. Mm -hmm. So, you know, obviously at that time we're signing people and we're, you know, investing in them. But, you know, we were really successful, mm -hmm. you know. So, I mean, whether you make the money back or not, it's a business deal. It's not about, you know, somebody, yo, I'm going to sign you, and if I ever get in trouble, you got to be there for me. You know, it's not mm -hmm. about that, you know. So a lot of times in the past, people built, uh, everything was on transaction, about what if I do something for you, you got me later on. Mm -hmm. And it's a learning experience now because all the business I do now is, on a, is relational. Mm -hmm. It's because I'm doing it out of love. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So if I do something for somebody, I never expect anything in return. And I think it's, that's the difference that we, I learned over the 20 years being in business. But it seemed like th with Dame with the separation, he took it his personal way and then it mm -hmm. led to a lot of times of an on again, off again kind of situation. Yeah, you know? well. Do you, you feel know. like kind of like you like more in the middle of it and looking at it kind of objectively at, at this time or? Oh uh, Yeah, definitely. But you know, Dame, last, like I got pictures in jail with Dame and Jay together. Mm -hmm. And then they would text me or email me because it's an email yeah, system when he went in prison. To the show, yeah. yeah, so they would email me together as well. So I never really listened to what the press is saying because I know they was put in a different light. But when you know when I speak to Jay, when I speak to Dame, it's all love. Yeah, you know. Right, touch on your incarceration um, during that time. Um, what was that? What was your mindset when you were going through that? Because you just we were released a year ago, mm -hmm. and um, prior to that, when did you go in and? I went in in 2012, okay. and yeah, I got out uh, about eight months ago. And you know, when you when you go in, it's just a lot of reflection. It's um, you know, you think about uh, what you're gonna do when you get out. Um, you think about you know the past, present, and everything. So I, you know, for me, I just did a lot of reading. A lot of working out. That's why a lot of people don't recognize me now. Yeah, he's like muscle <laughs> fitness, right? We get that muscle fitness um, cover, big. When they see me, but um, <laughs> more or less, you know, I, I started to uh, build relationships with the men in prison, and I started to think about them differently as well. Because you know, I had friends, Emery, obviously, um, one of the, my, my closest friends, being in prison for a long time, and Big Ty, who's in in prison right now. Uh, you you think about the support for them and. It's just about, yeah, I'm going to send them some money mm. and you send them some pictures and that's it. But you don't really think about what they're going through and what their family going through and what the day to day is like. Mm. So I got to experience that myself. And that's actually another thing that I'm doing right now is a nonprofit where I'm going back into prisons to help mm. the guys 
you know, in fellowship with them and then have them connect with this um, group called New Canaan Society um, on the outside. And they have 65 chapters around the country just to help support them. And it's more about not about giving, you know, I mean, obviously put, giving them money, you know, is one thing or sending them right. magazines. But it's actually just about being there relationally and to support them through this process, whether calling their sons on the birthday or, right. or, or, the, or their daughters or helping, the, you know, their parents on the outside and just giving them an ear for somebody to talk to. Do you feel like you were being targeted? Because I know you had an arrest prior for a similar charge, like in 2003 or so. Uh, I, I wouldn't say I was being targeted, but they used me for, you know, to publicize that case. Okay. You know, because they made it out much bigger than, you know, what it was. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I, I you know, at that time I was going to um, buy some dispensaries in California, and then I connected guys from New York to L.A., mm -hmm. and with that, you know, they said it was a conspiracy, mm -hmm. but at, th at the time, the DA really just wanted me to uh, talk, and I refused to do that, so that's why I got the time that I did. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing the report that they said when you was in court, you said you said to the judge that you'll never see me again. Yeah. Why did you feel it was important to say that? Do, wh why was that your statement to the court? Oh, but, you know, because I knew at that, at that moment how it was affecting my family, so you know, when you do things, sometimes you just really think about yourself. So my son, who was 14 at the time, was going through a real rough time. So uh, that statement was really, that was to more him. for him mm -hmm. as well, you know, not really for the judge. You know, I was letting her know, but it was for the people in the audience. There was a lot of kids there, my nephews, nieces, and a lot of people that I raised and helped out. So, you know, I just wanted to kind of set a better example. Right. That I'm going to go in this way, but you'll, yeah. you'll never go through this again. Yeah, this is never exactly. going to happen again. Right. What were your conditions like in jail? Like, was it, you know, oh, is this big from Rockefeller? Do people recognize you? Yeah, there like was that? people recognized me. There was guards that recognized me. But at, in that situation, it could play out two ways. You could get a lot of love or it could be a lot of hate, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, some guards are, I hate you because of who you are. And some guys, are show, you know, guards will show you a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of love. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I guess it was probably a combination of both. Mm -hmm. You were locked up here in New York? Nah, I was in uh, Lewisburg. I was in New York for a period of time in Brooklyn and um, in Manhattan, MCC and MDC, and then I went to Lewisburg, and then I finished out my time in McKean right. in uh, Pennsylvania. And that was the first time you had ever been locked up or anything, right? Yeah, for yeah, any did for you, a sentence. Yeah. Did you think that was it? What you thought of? I'm sure, you had thought about the dangers of of the lifestyle li that may lead to that. Was it? Did it end no. up ever being what you thought it was going to be? Um, I never really gave a thought before, but. At the time, how I, I made sense of it because of my past, and I was just like, well, you know, this is kind of like a slap in the wrist because if things would have happened to me a long time ago, you know, I probably would have been in there for 20 or 30 years. So mm -hmm. I just kind of made sense of it like that, just try to go in it, <laughs> into it with, you know, positive as, right as it could be. Right. Right. Yeah. Was it hard readjusting once you were released? Uh, not really. I didn't know what to expect, though, you know. So there's a lot of people in the music and entertainment business who's been in and out of jail, but I think at that time we kind of surpassed that of just being known as music or, you know, uh, label execs mm -hmm. because we had so many different companies. But, you know, with the New Canaan Society, I went there and I actually spoke there for about 40 minutes one day, and, and I started to see the reception from guys in the marketplace, you know, different guys who, who's not a part of this world, and, you know, that, that really helped me out a lot. Mm. So when you fir first day home, what what happens? What do you do? Uh, first day home, I actually uh, I got married. Wow. Yeah. So the first day home, uh, I got married and then had a b <laughs> bunch of food in the car, <laughs> shrimp, <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, home cooked food. My uh, my sister, my wife, and my son came to get me, and I ended up going. I was supposed to actually go straight home to home confinement, but I got there late. And uh, I had to stay a night at the halfway house, and mm -hmm. then after that, just went home. But so you came in knowing he's gonna get married. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that that is yeah, crazy. So Biggs does things does things big. Huh? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so she's the you know uh, the mother of my twenty year old kid. So yeah. it's a lot of history there too. Right. So we actually met her. We were just talking about it last night. I met her talking about going to St. Thomas to shoot in my lifetime video. Wow. Yeah, I, think, I think Biz wants to go back to St. Thomas. So. <laughs> you I definitely want to go. I just made reservations. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going in June for a wedding. <laughs> Speaking of trips, um, I remember seeing talk, well, hearing Dame talk about like that trip you took Kanye to London. What was that experience like? Uh, I mean, that that was great, especially for for Kanye. I think that um, really introduced him to to the UK, and 
he was a little reluctant about going on that trip. And <laughs> <laughs> once he got out there, though, and, and to receive the love, I mean, he talks about it today. He spends a lot of time overseas. And right. I think yeah, he, you know. Keep my head. Yeah. And it, it, and it kind of all goes back to that first trip. I just seen some footage that. Right. Um, Tim that, Westwood. Yeah, Tim Westwood dropped the other day um, with that. And, um, you know, because we, we end up spending a lot of time out there. We end up getting a house out there, oh, you wow. know, that we were renting. So uh, Dame and I between LA, California, New York, we was probably spend two weeks mm. um, in each place. So we'd be two weeks in New York, two weeks in Beverly Hills, and two weeks in London. Wow. So we had a place in um, Victoria, and Dave Beckham actually bought the house that we used to rent um, out in Chelsea. Wow. That's what I'm saying, those amazing moments, like obviously you guys, like you said, came in with some money, but like to reach these heights, like was there moments where you just look back like, wow, I can't believe like it, it's definitely we're on and, top and then, of the world right Yeah, now. when I came home, um, maybe I want to say three months ago, uh, my wife opened up this chest and I seen probably four or five hundred pictures that I didn't even know I still had. Mm -hmm. And as I'm going through the pictures, I can remember the moments. At that time, I mean, I, I, mean, I was smoking so much weed and <laughs> doing, you know, doing everything. It was like a blur. You just like when you live in it. Yeah. But now as I look back, you know, it, it, it was an amazing ride. Right. During that five year gap when you were gone, like, what do you think changed the most? Like, you know, social media is prominent now and things like that. Well, I'm saying I seen that a long time ago. You know, I had a social network back in uh, 2001, Block Savvy, right. that we Block launched. Savvy, yeah. 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 So, you know, I, I kind of seen, uh, you know, where it was going with that. But it, it was it was pretty much prevalent before I went in. You know, I, I only ended up doing probably um, close to four years in prison. So it oh, wasn't, years, you know, right. you know, relatively speaking, that much time. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah. Right. yeah. The game has changed a lot. Yeah, the game has changed. Uh, you know, I guess the biggest thing is the, you know, the music and, the, you know, the sound clouds and um, mm -hmm. things like that and other music platform, the streaming services online. That's probably the uh, the biggest change, the, you the, know, especially for the artists because a lot of artists are launching their careers yeah. through that, right? You think about Lil Yachty right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. he's having amazing success. Right. And that's all through, you know, just streaming services, yeah. you know. And, and I spoke to Coach K. He doesn't even want to sign him to a label. Wow. Does, does I was gonna say, do you make want to go back yeah, into the music, music thing? You might hear somebody and be like, "Oh my God, I might want to jump back in." No, nah, not, not, <laughs> not really, not really. You know, like I said, we made history with that. I was gonna man. say, do you feel like Dame has said that at times? Like you get, you set such a high standard, it's almost like it has to be a certain yeah, a saying, quality to do it. I, I, truthfully, I didn't have a love for music. I mean, I love music personally, but I didn't have a love for the music business. And, and 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 also that whole time, it was just a good business decision, and I seen the bigger picture and all the other things we could have done around it. So that's why I actually entered into that, you know, that deal with Dame and Jay. Mm. It wasn't about, oh yeah, because I love music so much, this is what I want to do. I actually like business. I like starting things and making something from nothing. Mm. Is it true that you introduced Jay to Juan? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, Juan is a you know used to be a real good friend of mine. We spent a lot of time together, and even during the Hard Knock Life tour, I think I only went to one show. What? Yeah, the one <laughs> the one in D.C. because Allen Iverson was playing against Ross Strickland, and I wanted to go to the game, so I flew out to, to the D.C. But like during that whole time, it was just being me and Juan. We'd be on his block and just buying magnums or. Uh, Cristal Rose and just going to clubs every day and just spending a lot of time. So you were the one, the 4.0 range, the Rollies, you introduced that 4. to- 4.6. 4, excuse me. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's a yeah. cocksucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I never had a 4.0. <laughs> Sorry, <Yeah. laughs> So yeah, I had the the Platinum Rolex, the, you know, the range, the Champagne, the Louis the 13th, all that. You know, like me and Dame would joke about it. It'd be like, Biggs did it first and Jay put it in the verse. Wow. Yeah. But <laughs> Biggs did it first and Jay put it in the verse. <laughs> Yeah, but, you know, those are great guys, man. Wow. And, and think about the roster that you guys had. Like, did you sign off on all those guys that ever came through Rockefeller, or were you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we all, everything, you know, we made, we came together collectively to make all the decisions, you know, especially with the signings. And, um, I mean, the, the, you know, it was something that we missed, too, with Scarface. We were pretty close to signing Scarface oh, yeah, at one yeah. time. Twister, I think, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, I signed a lot of people to Twister, the yeah. And then, uh, cause Nori was just up here, right? Yeah, right. he said you had. A, she took your chain. Or I was, I was just about to say that. <laughs> so that's the only. I, and uh, Nori, can I have my chain back? <laughs> so, cause I, I personally gave him my chain, oh, and then he never signed the deal, and then kept the chain. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Hang, hang. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like some shit Nori would do. Yeah, Nori, so you know send many, that you, chain back, baby. You have, you have any chains? You have no chains? Yeah, I got, yeah, I got no, some chains. No, one or two? I, yeah. I tried to but get that was to the, the chains. That was my original. That was the, the original, original chain, the very first one. 
Wow. Yeah. Where are they now? Man? Yeah. <laughs> Khaled and Nori. Yeah, know somebody, get Nor- Nori get, somebody <laughs> get Nori on the line. Get him on Skype or something. You know Nori got it somewhere. You know I know Nori he does. Got it somewhere. Yeah, know let me does. get that chain back. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, you know, Jay and Kanye are probably the most successful ones. Like, you know, 20 years later, like you see Jay has title. He has yeah. Rock Nation. Like, what are your thoughts about, you know, the success that he has, the Barclay Center? Like, while you were in, while you was inside, he kind of made a lot of these power moves. Yeah, I was happy, wow. you know, and that actually motivated me, you know. So a lot of times, you know, when I'm going through things and I would spin the track and put on a Jay's album or something like that, or, you know, some old music, you know, I would get inspired by hearing all these things that was going on outside. So it just kind of motivated me even more to, yeah. you know, just want to come out and do something. Oh, so you kept kind of in contact, like an ear to the street, more or less. Yeah, about definitely. What was going yeah, on. yeah, yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. So um, it was never any hate. It was just it was all you. I used it all for motivation. Right, right. right. Yeah. So everyone's good then. You, Dame, Jay, everyone's Everybody, on a good page. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's great to hear though. Yeah. Because people just want to celebrate, man. The, the glory days. Of, I mean, you think? Do you, where do you think the movement ranks with like? There's been powerful movements in music. The Bad Boys, the Death Rows, but I think something about the Rockefeller reign, yeah, yeah. you know, connects to people in a special way because, mm-hmm. like you said, because of the integrity, because of the authenticity, like, yeah. And even and the, it's still building. Yeah. That's probably why, you know, so a lot of, you know, come and gone, but this is still building. You know, um, unfortunately, Biggie passed, you know, Tupac has passed mm. and Sugar's gone what he's going through. But, um, you know, the different things, it's, it's still building, especially with the name Rock out there still, right, with Rock mm-hmm. Nation right. and things like that, that yeah. you know, that's being done. And, you know, me and Emery working together, I mean, Tata taking over the realms, you know, you got Jay Brown, you got Shaka, you got Shari over in Atlantic, Emmanuel over in Atlantic, I mean... Mm-hmm. Al Branch, who I just seen the other yeah. day, is just you know I, I'm just happy that you know we got guys all over right now that's still you know feeling the you know getting you know yeah. re- re- receiving the success right. that they you know they work so would hard. Would you for. consider pairing up with any of those, or you feel like it's important to build your own? Like, would you join well, the Rock Nation in some capacity, or you feel like it's important I, I to build your own? I, I I don't know if I would want to join in that capacity, but what I'm doing right now. In, and I have a, a, a in-house branding company. And 4th of November, um, with this line, is just one clothing line that I'm going to drop over the you know over the next 18 months. We got four more clothing lines. Okay. Wow. So a lot cool. of people don't understand what's going on, and they you know think that I was chasing Rockaware or, or another clothing line. But I have things going on in different tiers of dif- distribution, um, different um, tier levels. So you know different price points. So it's not really about what 4th of November is doing. It's about the whole thing and then an in-house branding vision. company and a marketing company along with that. And then we're also looking to buy businesses and, and, and um, partner up with strategic partners as well. Wow. So it's a, it's, it's a bigger play. So it's all about taking over the yeah, apparel. It's just, the yeah, apparel. yeah, 4th yeah. of November was just the first thing in place. And like I said, people are gravitating towards it and it's selling out. So. You know, that's just just laying the foundation. You and Dane was supposed to do a lounge together called the Breakfast Club. What happened with that? <laughs> we, we, we no, we had a club together. We oh, did. Right. <laughs> yeah, so we had um, on 14th Street, and I forget the name of it all the time. It was the um, Old Nails. So oh, had, where Nails used to be. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So with um with with Noel uh, Ashman. So we had a club there. And we had one in uh, Beverly Hills too that we had invested with uh, Justin Timberlake and a couple other people. Oh wow! Yeah. What was some business moves you think? Well, we shouldn't have did that. Like that. That was a bad move. Like you could admit, <laughs> you could admit that maybe that wasn't the right thing. Is there anything you look back on? Like um, that might not have worked or rock box. I, that's the first thing that just came to mind. <laughs> but actually, it was a good idea. That's what I'm saying. It was a good idea. It's just that we couldn't get the price point that we needed yeah. to compete with Apple. Mm. So at the time, I mean, Apple was buying so many MP3 players, and we needed to shrink the size, and we couldn't, we couldn't do it because of the price points. And our our uh, MP3 player would have had to be priced higher than theirs. Mm. So we kind of got out that business. The margins was just didn't make sense for us. Mm. And Armadale, why didn't that like become? Well, what happened was we were partners with William Grant and Sons, and. They had maybe four other brands they were uh, 50-50 partners with, and they wanted to own all their brands at 100%. Mm. So uh, we actually bought them out and oh. got back uh, um, 100% of it. And at the time, we was trying to find new distribution and new manufacturers, and it, it, you know, it just didn't work out with mm. the, um, the partners we were trying to get with. Oh, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. And then somebody picked up the trademark because I think it's out there now. Right, right. Yeah. And at one point it was dead, but it's still, I think it's someone picked it back up, like yeah. you said. Mm-hmm. So what's your favorite rock release, man? Man. You need that big, before we get out of here, we need that Bigs playlist, man. What's the, what's the <laughs> Bigs know, yeah, endorsed well, rock it's and funny classics? 
right now I'm listening to a lot of American Gangster. Wow. And it's funny because that album, it, it in some ways remind me of Reasonable Doubt because you, you still catch ke- like I'm catching lines now. I've heard it about thirty times, and I'm like, <laughs> well, I, well, I didn't even catch that line. Right. Yeah. You know, you know, off the uh, off the wall, no easel, uh, like Mac Jackson. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, man, he just killed that. Me and Emery was talking about that the other day. It's funny because people would hate on Jay, say, well, he should retire. Why does he keep going? And now the new generation is fiending for him to come back with yeah. new music. Like, why yeah. doesn't Jay give us an album? Why doesn't Jay give us a verse? Well, and like, then. He's re- he's a rapper's rapper too, you know, as well. So, you know, other rappers love him, you know what I'm saying? So, and Jay's smart. He knows he could collaborate anybody and he's going to still kill him on a record. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you just need one good 16. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's it. And Jay going to smash you down. <laughs> so, um, I mean, it's, it's so many songs on there, man. I, I don't know if I got, <laughs> if there's any um, favorites. It's a combination of a bunch of albums, you know. So I'm, I'm always currently changing playlists, you know, and, and liking songs until, you know, they fade out and then putting new ones in. But, I mean, with the body of music Jay have, man, it, it's it's, ca- it's kind of hard to say I like this over. I mean, he got, I mean, easily 150 hits, man. Right. <laughs> is, it, is it hard for a person like you that was so involved with Rockefeller, obviously, to listen to the album the way I would listen to the album? Uh, It probably was but in jail i got to listen to it as a fan mm. and i got to appreciate a lot of the songs you know from the other side especially with him coming out with new music mm. so uh you know some of the stuff i remember even not liking in the beginning like what um but this was right before i went to jail watch the throne i remember calling hip-hop like oh man that's a dud and i remember calling the next day it's like oh man that's a classic because <laughs> <laughs> they used to be in the studio man yeah, wow. yeah. so you would get the, the the music on tapes or how was it listening no nah, they'd have an mp3 player in, in jail yeah in, in the federal system now. oh wow yeah that's a come up yeah yeah <laughs> wow so what's your fondest moment of, like, I have so many Rockefeller stories, like, seeing it from the outside looking in. It looks- um, I don't, I, probably just the free play. And I just told him, me and Jay was talking about the other day. I was like, um, you know, when you get back in the studio, we got to go in there and get some free play. We would call it free play because, say, if Jay is going to do a song, like that president's whatever, he'll just start rapping, and it won't be the lyrics for that song. Wow. And we used to call it free play. So you start hearing, like, verses and mm-hmm. stuff you've never heard before. And he'll just go on for mi- like you know five, ten minutes, fifteen minutes sometimes. Just getting it out. Yeah, just just going crazy, and that's what we used to love. Like, yo, put that on there, put that on there. And he was like, no, and then you might not never hear it again. Free you know, play, like, free yeah. Play. So we used to call it free play, and Jay used to just go crazy, you know, because wow. he don't write nothing too, so he forget music. It's a lot of stuff that he forgot. So like um, a song that was supposed to go on Reasonable Doubt called "It's Hot" um, was crazy that Ski produced. Wow, it's yeah. hot. It's hot. Yeah. yeah. Are we ever gonna hear that? Is it, it still I exists? I don't know. I don't. I don't know where it's at. I don't think Ski has it. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> you know, the yeah. young Guru guy got a lot of stuff. Right. right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the guru <laughs> don't have that. What, no, no, what, no, definitely not that. What, what I want to know is like after uh, Volume Two. That's probably my favorite Jay album. What mm. was life like for you guys? Because you sold six million records. Um. It was just like, you know, we knew it. <laughs> mm, told was, you so. Yeah, kinda, yeah, like, yeah. You know, what I mean, like that to to other people, but for us, it was always playing in the next thing. Mm. So you remember, right after that, Rockaway came out. Right after that, Armadale came out. Right after that, it was just you know. Did a lot of things come your way, or you still had to kind of like have this independent spirit? Um, things things came our way, but it, you know, we were really creative and wanted to do things on our own as well. It was a lot of turning things down because people at that time come with you with everything, rock this, rock that, rock of this, that. And we was like, oh man, nah, this don't make sense. <laughs> so at that time, uh, that's when MySpace sold for 580 million and then I was trying to look to use our database that we had from the music to try to build a social network. Mm-hmm. So it was always just trying to chase the next thing. Mm-hmm. Oh man. And also, you were in a couple of videos, only like four videos, I think. Was always resistance. Four videos. <laughs> it was feeling it, yeah. face off, the uh, life in my lifetime, and I think it was also uh, can't stop, won't stop. Those are the four. Maybe. No, it was. It was. Uh, it was probably a few more. A few more. <laughs> <laughs> 
You had a yeah. fire. You like where's Waldo? One for Petey Crack. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't. He wasn't that one. Yeah, yeah, right. I wasn't that. <laughs> but it was never like your thing to be. In well, the... well, yeah. We'll talk about even now. Like I was like, I don't know if we're gonna get twenty minutes from Biggs. Like Biggs doesn't do interviews. Like why did you feel it's time to kind of just put yourself out there a little bit more and talk? Uh, well, I didn't. We didn't have to before. So yeah. Jay didn't do it neither, right? Yeah. So the, the way the company was built was go you know, through Dame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dame would you know do that. He would be the face of that. He would do all the interviews, and that's Jay would rap, and then me. I would just handle business, and then come through when we need to do things collectively. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times, like I said, I'd spent a lot of time in the studio. So you know, I worked with all the artists um, through the studio with hip hop at that time. Mm -hmm. So hip hop being a studio, just sitting on hits. And you know, <laughs> be like, you know, we got to put this music out. You can't just have the music in the studio. We have to put it out. <laughs> grabbing, grabbing yeah. files from motherfuckers. Right. Like it's going out tomorrow. And when you went to Kanye, like rock the mic. When, you know, he had that song. Sitting on that. Oh, right. I mean, hip hop had that song for like eight months. Wow. The rock, just sitting on rock the yeah. mic. And what wow. he didn't believe in it enough? Or he, he just because he was doing so. You know, it was so much music, and we at that time we had all those different artists. Yeah. So I would come in, and I'd be like, play, you know, let me start hearing songs. And I, we this just, is a bass line? Yeah, and we just yeah. started putting albums together. What was your and take on that era? We talk, they talk about the era. You have like a young Kanye, a young Just Blaze, just banging these yeah, beats out. Yeah, like, and, and, you know, um, Bink. Bink was Bink, doing his right? thing. Yeah, People man. forget Bink yeah. with some dope beats too. Yeah, Bink. Like, did you feel like now you have like a hit factory thing going on now? Like, this um, is fine. It was like just that? so natural. You know what I mean? Yeah. Guys would just come there and then they they didn't want to leave. We had so many artists that they all love, right? So, I mean, State Property in itself was like three or four groups. And then along with Kanye, mm -hmm. you know what Dip I'm saying? Set. Yeah, mm -hmm. Dipset. And it, it was just so much work there. It's like I could stay here and I'm getting on somebody's album. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Bleak, you know, right. you know, still at that time. Wow, much is made of the of, of the J O boy thing. Like, what was your take on that? Like, Jay wanted to get on the record, and they didn't want him to be on the record. I guess, and he did get on the record. Yeah, yeah, but um, Cam didn't like the way it, um it came out at mm -hmm. that time. Did that kind of stuff happen often at times with certain groups? Because everybody's so involved with each other's projects uh, at times. No, like, it just, I think Jay's view. He always wanted people to stand on their own, and he didn't want um their notoriety to come from him being on one of their songs. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, if you hear Jay on any of the old artists, there's always an album cut. Mm. Jay yeah. wouldn't get on a sing a sing because yeah. if it sounds like a <laughs> right. single, right. he knows that they're gonna be like, "Oh yeah, video." Wow. So Jay yeah. always got. <laughs> if you listen to it, it's always an album cut. Now I'm thinking it'll, about it. Welcome to New York City is probably the cl yeah. almost the closest be, to a single. Almost. It, no, I'm yeah. saying listen, like yeah. you know, singles are three yeah, minutes, yeah, three yeah, thirty. Yeah. Jay always got on a song. It's four, four twenty. Five minutes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Jay be like, I got another verse. I got another yeah. verse. <laughs> I never thought about that. Make sure this can't go to radio. That's yeah. crazy. Oh, I know it because the thing with him, I remember with yeah. him when running XXL, he wouldn't pose with the younger artists on the cover. Like, yeah. 50 would do that. 50 would stand next to Banks. Yeah. 50 would stand next to Yale. Jay wouldn't do a cover with whoever it was. Yeah, just, Jay just, you know, yeah, that was his. That's why know. that Seagull one, I had to fight right. for it. That was yeah, that was just Jay thing. He just wanted everybody to stand on his own. That's all. During that beef mm. era, did you did you how what was your mindset at the time? Did you even care or was it just what, like, beef with who? Jigger, I mean Jigger with uh, Nas doing the whole Rockefeller oh, versus the yeah world. yeah definitely yeah definitely I cared. Um, Can't be just playing ether around Bigs and stuff like yeah you know, like that, right? I, yeah it was funny because he when he did the the song the Earth came and got him me and hip hop was going home. And I was calling the studio like, no, the bridge is over, the bridge is over, we gotta do the bridge is over. Give him the beat, send the beat down there, and then he already had did the- uh, Super Ugly? Yeah, Super Ugly. Oh, you wanted him to rhyme over the bridge is over? Yeah. Oh, uh, there you go with the Nas nice. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Damn. See, Big got some music thought? ideas, man. Right? <laughs> yeah. Was there a record that in particular that you believed in that maybe rose to the top that no one else believed in or knew it was gonna be a hit? Um. Yeah, well, uh, probably the Young Gun song, oh, Can, Can't Stop, Won't yeah, Stop. Yeah, that was a big, big yeah, record. Yeah, nobody yeah. really thought that that was going to be, and um, uh, a young a &R Ramsey had uh, played the beat for me, and it kind of re reminded me of that clip song, um, Grinding, Grinding. Mm. and it had that kind of, that sound to it, you know, so sonically it reminded me of that, but I thought the hook was bigger on that song, so I had believed in that, and that, that actually was one of our biggest songs, the Rockefeller, I think, and we, we got maybe about 8,000 spins on that. It was almost our number one record. Speaking of clips, Pusha T shouted you out. Kareem Big yeah, Burke on tour, what yeah. did you think of that? Like, yeah, but yeah, Pusha T been showing a lot of love. He um, you know, said my name in a couple songs. I haven't, I, I met him for the first time at my New York City event for 4th of November. Wow, wow. that was the first time. Yeah, so I spoke to him in jail, because <laughs> at that time, you know, when I first went in jail, I was still kind of eating good, and. 
I think it was my birthday, and we had just got some Peter Lugas in. What? So I was eating some. <laughs> wait, Gangsta wait, wait. style. Yeah. It's like good fellas? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he had, uh, you know, sent me a shout out like next year, Peter Lugas on me for my, ne- my you know, my, my birthday. He came the year after that. So I had uh, reached out to him and told him, like, I'm doing this event. He was like, look, I'm going to just fly in just for that event. So he came in and, you know, really supported me. And, and I, you know, I send him clips and, um, you know, things that's going on with me from time to time. And we never got a, t- a chance to sit down and chop it up. But I told him, you know, if, any, if there's anything I could help him with, you know, feel free to contact me as well. But he seems like a real, real good guy. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. And I congratulated him, too, I know, on a good music uh, presidency that right. he got over there, yeah, too. Yeah, he yeah. got a good situation. So what was that conversation like with Kanye at the Garden? We just spoke um, briefly. So, you know, he had tapped me and then, you know, thanked me for coming. And he was going in to change to, um, you know, to go out there. And then I seen him again, and I just told him how proud I was yeah. of him. You know, I so said, look, man, I remember the beginning. Because Kanye, we would talk for hours, and Kanye would be like, hey, Biggs, how do I keep a million dollars? He said, I keep making money, but... It, I don't know how to keep it. Like, how do I, how, <laughs> how, how do you have a million dollars? How do you do it? You know, so me and him would talk for hours about saving money Wow. back then, you know. You got some tips for us? Yeah. Big, <laughs> <you know? laughs> Jim, Jim Jones always talk about that too because I had told him about the, the last time when the market crashed, I was like, Jim, it's going to be a tough time right now. Start saving your money. And he was like, man, you know how much money I lost in the market and this and that, Biggs. And it's funny because he just hit me the other day because I had picked balling too. For him. Really? Oh, yeah. wow. So I would always listen to his albums and take off records and tell him to do this. And when he had that, I was like, trust me, this is it. Go with that song. So he, he never puts out an album unless I, I listen to it. He just texts me two days ago. It's like, I'm sending you songs. I'm about to put out music. I want you to listen to it. Wow. But you're not going to bless the world with the music gift? Man? It's like you're kind of like halfway in, halfway out with it, man. Yeah, They're trying yeah. to pull you back in. Yeah, they are. But, you know, I show, <laughs> I show love to those. That's what it is. All right, well, Hassan, before we go, so again, in the meantime, 4th of November is the focus. How do we get our hands on this, man? I uh, want, well, how can I get a deal? How can we get a deal, man? That varsity me jacket me? is fire. Yeah, yeah. yeah so down with the movement? The, uh, the raw we denim, need savage that. denim varsity Things We jacket. need that, baby. Yeah. This shit is hot. Yeah. Look at that. Hand Chanel. But, uh, yeah, 4th of Can November. Can we get a little discount at least, Biggs? Yeah, side. definitely. We'll get y'all the, 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 yeah, the friends and family rate. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. We can get us online, e-commerce. and Yeah, yeah. You go to 4th of November.com and we got, um, well, we got limited product on there. I mean, it's selling out so fast. Yeah. But Foot Action, too. So we're in Foot Action stores. And in, in June, we'll be going into Macy's as well. So how hands are you? Are you with the, like, you pick all the designs? or I don't, um, I know. They, they have they have a lot of design. Um, going. We have a great designer, um guy named Carl. Great guy, and this was his vision. That was actually his parents that you know why he named it Fourth of November. But um, yeah, I would help with it. So maybe some things I might add to it or take away. Mm. But you know, the idea and everything comes from him and um, and Radu too. Okay, this is dope. Yeah. I'm in. Fourth of November and yeah. Biggs, man, Biggs, the longest interview Biggs has ever done. Exactly. Right? <laughs> Got the exclusive. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. A complex next, I hear. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Nah, Biggs, we really appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. It's man. all good, fam. All right, man. Peace. Wrap right our podcast. Yeah. All right.